Hello and thanks for tuning in. My name is Max and in today's video I will be going over the design and construction of the flight computer for my TVC rocket. If this is your first time watching my channel or have no idea what I'm talking about, I would suggest you watch the first video in this series. Otherwise, let's get started. Before we can build anything, we first need a plan. What is this flight computer meant to do and what does it need to do its job? And for this purpose, I often like to make a flow diagram so I can plan out what I'm doing. So let's first answer what is this flight computer doing? Well, we know that we want to control the direction of the rocket's thrust in order to establish thrust vector control so it stays on course. So this means it'll need to control some type of actuator to do this. Also, it'd be a good idea if we collected some data so that we can see later on what the rocket did during its flight, which could potentially be used to fix many issues or just learn about more about the rocket. Also, we want the flight computer to control the deployment of the parachute so that the rocket doesn't go smashed into the ground. Okay, so we've answered what the flight computer will be doing, but we still need to answer what does it need in order to do its job. Well, first we said we want to control the direction of the rocket's thrust in order to thrust vector so that it stays on course. That means, in order to do this, we need to know the rocket's angular orientation in space. As for collecting data, that's simple. All we need is some sort of device to write data onto, like a flash drive or an SD card. And what does the flight computer need to control the deployment of the parachute? Ideally, you want, the, you want to deploy the parachute at Apogee, which is the highest point in the rocket's flight. Meaning, in order to do this, we need to know our altitude. Now that we've figured out what the flight computer is meant to do, and what it needs to do its job, we need to figure out how it's going to do this. In other words, what components are we going to use? To control the direction of the thrust, we need some type of actuator. For this, we can use a servo motor. A servo motor is a special type of electric motor that allows for precise control of its position, typically within a range of 180 degrees of motion. For collecting data, there's many options, but I think one of the most convenient options is just a simple micro SD card, which we can write our data to with a special breakout board, as shown here. To deploy the parachute, we can also use a servo again, like how it was done on my ARD-2 rocket. Quick side note, I also plan to launch this rocket again soon. As for determining our angular orientation, we'll use a special device called an IMU, which stands for an Inertial Measurement Unit. I know that sounds complicated, and to be quite frank, it is. But in simple terms, what an IMU is, is it's a device that senses and measures a body's acceleration and angular velocity all without an external reference. Imagine it like this. If you were an IMU, someone could blindfold you, spin you around 100 times, and make you do 100 flips. And based off of your measurements, you could determine exactly where you were and your orientation. I'm not gonna go into detail about how IMUs work because they're fairly complicated, and that could be a whole video in itself. Just know for our purposes, the IMU will tell the flight computer its exact angular orientation relative to where we want it to be. Additionally, to figure out our altitude, we'll use another small device called a barometric pressure sensor that basically just measures the air pressure and determines our altitude. But wait, so far we've covered all the components that the flight computer needs to do its job and the components that carry out that job. But what about the brains? The brains of the flight computer is an Arduino Nano. An Arduino is a type of microcontroller. And a microcontroller is basically a very small stripped down version of a computer on a single chip that performs a specific function. So it's not exactly like your laptop or desktop and it's far less powerful and can perform far less tasks. However, for our purposes, it's sufficient. Finally, we need something to power all this. So naturally, we'll use the worst possible battery for this purpose, the humble 9 volt. Why use a 9 volt then? The main reason for this design choice is the fact that 9 volts are fairly cheap and easy to work with, and more importantly, safe. The more appropriate battery type for this application is what is called a LiPo, which is commonly used in RC planes, cars, and so on. LiPos have way more capacity than 9 volts and can output more power, but they can be dangerous, and when handled improperly, they have a tendency to catch on fire. So for now, we'll use not one, but two 9 volts to power this flight computer. 
All the components will be powered directly from the Arduino, which in turn is powered by the 9 volts. The servos, however, are the most power-hungry part of the flight computer, so the way they will be powered will be different. You see, the Arduino is incapable of providing all the current the servos need without getting damaged, so the servos will have to be powered directly by the 9 volts instead. However, the servos can only operate off of 5 volts, so to prevent the servos from getting fried by the 9 volts, we take the output of the 9 volts and put it through a device called a buck converter. What a buck converter does is it reduces the source voltage while simultaneously increasing output current, which is exactly what we need for our servos. For the final flight computer, there are two routes we can take. We can go the protoboard route or the PCB route. PCB stands for Printed Circuit Board, and it is a mechanical base that connects and holds the components of an electrical circuit together, and is what you traditionally think of when you think of a circuit board. These have to be custom designed by you and made by a special PCB service. This is the ideal option, however it will cost more, require more effort, and take more time to receive. And this is not a good idea if you're in the prototyping phase, like me. A protoboard is a solderable board made about the same material as PCBs that has a bunch of holes in it to solder components to and to make electrical connections. This is the cheaper and simpler route and is well suited for prototyping. So for now, this is what we'll go with. Now we know all the parts we need, what they do, and how the flight computer will be built. Next, we need a circuit diagram to serve as a guide for how everything will be connected and work together. Here, I hand drew the circuit diagram for the flight computer. Side note, I could do this on the computer, but I find it more enjoyable to do it by hand. I also add a few other parts onto the flight computer, such as a test switch and a buzzer. Finally, all I need to do is solder all the components together. So after many hours of soldering and inhaling noxious fumes, here's the finished product. As you can see, I had to make many, many connections by hand, so hopefully in the future I will get a custom PCB instead. Here I'm pointing out a few components, such as the test switch, uh, the buzzer, and the power switch. These pins I'm pointing out here are the header pins that connect to the servos to control the thrust vector control mount as well as the parachute. Here I'm demonstrating powering on the flight computer. Uh, right now I actually cannot do anything because there is no code uploaded to it. So that will be one of the next major steps I need to take is to actually write the full control software. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for my next upload where I'll be going over the thrust vector control mount. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.